Hello, and thank you for tuning in to this episode on MasterCard Academy 2.0. My name is Melanie Gersten, and I'm on MasterCard's cyber product development team. I joined this team because after years of working as an investigator on high-profile merchant payment card breaches, I wanted to be able to develop solutions that could help prevent against these types of attacks. Over the next five minutes, I'm going to walk you through what a merchant data breach is, how it happens, and then focus specifically on a data breach trend impacting online merchant websites called digital skimming. We will end this episode with best practices that can help keep your website safe. When we talk about merchant payment card breaches, an important concept to understand is the common point of purchase. In this example, all of the green dots represent legitimate shoppers making authorized purchases around the world. What do all of these shoppers have in common? On the same day, these shoppers all transact at a website of a business based in Florida. This is also an authorized legitimate purchase. What the cardholders did not know was that this website in Florida was infected with malware the previous day. So each time a shopper entered their cardholder data, a criminal group was able to exfiltrate this information to a country far away. The website in Florida was the common point of purchase. Two weeks later, after the criminal group stole the cards and sold them on the dark web, fraud started happening on all of the cards that had been used to shop at the common point of purchase. These were unauthorized, subsequent fraudulent transactions. Over the past five years, online breaches of websites have continued to increase. One of the biggest trends is that of digital skimming, also referred to as mage cart or form jacking. This is what happens when hackers exploit website weaknesses and inject malicious code, usually JavaScript, into the source code of the website to steal cardholder data as it is typed into the checkout cart. This has been making major headlines around the world. We even saw a story in early 2020 that the Indonesian law enforcement was able to conduct the first ever arrest of criminals carrying out this type of attack. It's a problem that impacts the whole world and that law enforcement is paying close attention to. Unfortunately, COVID-19 has exacerbated the situation because more, more people are shopping online. With more people relying on the internet globally and with card present transactions becoming more secure with the adoption of EMV chip and contactless security features, hackers know they need to target websites to remain profitable. The reason digital skimming is so successful and is garnering media attention is because hackers have figured out ways to cast a wide net. We've seen an uptick in spray and pray attacks, where using automated codes in their attacks, hackers can infect tens of thousands of websites that share the same vulnerability, such as outdated software, all at once. We've also seen hackers carry out digital skimming attacks through infecting third-party vendors. One example of this was a chatbot vendor who was infected. Then, all of the websites that had that vendor's chatbot running on their sites to provide support to customers were also infected. It's more important than ever not only to conduct vulnerability assessments of your own IT infrastructure, but you must also conduct monitoring of your third parties. Now that you have an understanding of what digital skimming is and why it's harmful, Let's review industry best practices to follow to better protect your merchant website from this type of attack. First is that any website collecting payment cards must ensure they are in compliance with the Payment Card Industry Data Security Standards, or PCI DSS. Even applying this required minimum baseline of security will help protect your business from attack. In my time as an investigator, I never saw a payment card data breach event where the victim entity was fully PCI compliant at the time of attack there was always at least one requirement not in place. Next is to make sure that all of the software used for your website is running the supported versions that are fully patched with the latest security updates. End of life software or unpatched software are easy targets for attackers seeking their next victims. You should also ensure that your website is using strong authentication and login protections. Using multi-factor authentication instead of just a username and password will make it a lot harder for attackers to gain administrative access through a login portal. 
Then, as I mentioned before, be sure to properly vet any third-party vendors or third-party code libraries that your website relies on. Next is to use a control such as file integrity monitoring to track any modifications to your website's source code. This goes hand in hand with regularly conducting audits and monitoring logs to detect malicious activity. If you are accepting payments on your website and notice anything suspicious, urgently contact your acquiring bank so that they can help. It is also very important to maintain a record of evidence and report any malicious activity to law enforcement so that they can build strong cases and continue to prosecute hackers.